Hey there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got mail. Santee. How do they write in the Old West? O-W-O -O operator. Hmm. How they wrote, huh? We can do that. Last weekend, the Ghost Riders performed at an event in the historic town of Florence, Arizona. Mad Mac was there and apparently picked up a new hobby. I got this a restaurant right here for you, stealing my shirt. No, no, I, you stole my shirt because I had it first, remember? You like that shirt? I was wearing the shirt first, just for the record, right? So you're going to have to go change. That's not what the warrant says. Right, can I see the warrant that you're arresting me with? Hey guys, look at this. Did you make this with a quill ink pen? Maybe. That's from Sarsaparilla Joe and mm -hmm. Mad Mac there. That's pretty cool. But you're still under arrest. Sarsaparilla Joe from the group Code of the West apparently teaches people the writing techniques of the 19th century. Well, that got me really curious. In a previous episode, I showed Dave Rogers' handwritten guide to packing out. Embarking on something out of my scope of knowledge, I decided to contact Dave, since he also teaches in this realm. My telegraph was down. <laughs> So I had to contact him using current technology. Hey Siri, call Dave Rogers. Calling Jake from State Farm. No, 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 not Jake from State Farm. I'm home. What are you wearing? Khakis. <clears throat> well, anyway, Dave told me that the first inks used were carbon inks, soot or charcoal suspended in glue or varnish. They obtained the term India ink due to the trade economy between England and India. By the 19th century, they added Prussian blue for darkening the ink, and this mess was sold in sealed bottles to be used with a pen. You could also make it at home. There was that cool glass inkwell that you would see on a desk in an office, and for those traveling, there was a more portable one with a rubber seal. For the people all said, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. Pens of the era had the same basic concept of the previous centuries. Dip a tubular implement narrowed at the tip into ink where it would collect in the tube which would act as a reservoir. These pens could be the standard feather quill or a steel nib attached to a shaft made of wood or exotic materials. Just like today, it depended on what you could afford. You could buy the quills in bundles and with a pocket knife shape the writing tip as broad or narrow as you wanted. Incidentally, this is where we get the pen knife. Pencils were around too. Early on they were produced in plain wood. The yellow paint didn't popularize in the American market until after 1890. Paper was progressing and the machinery making it was advancing. By 1880, America was the largest producer of paper in the world. There were so many different types of fibers that were used back then that it was important to know how your ink was going to react to it. A pounce made of crushed sand or cuttlefish bones could be used to prepare some paper for writing and also speed up the drying time of ink. Blotting paper was also available, but it was a little more expensive. If you're writing and you made a mistake, you could use a scraper that would shave off the error with perhaps a thin layer of the paper. Yeah, the whiteout of the Old West. If you've experienced historic handwritten documents, you've noticed that people wrote beautifully. It's like art, and certainly puts my penmanship to shame. Methods like Palmer, Spencerian, and Copperplate were seen and taught on the frontier. I realize we're in an era where writing is frequently shadowed by the amazing technologies available to us. However, as we've shown you, you can still learn to write like our Old Westians. I urge us all to take a note from Sarsaparilla Joe, Dave Rogers, and Mad Mac, who are keeping the Old West alive, one letter at a time. Hey, hold on there. I know you, you're Santee. I'm Dan, and I got a warrant for your arrest. Wait just a second, gentlemen. He is Santee. My name's Dan. I got a warrant for his arrest. I'm Dan. I got a warrant for his arrest. No. My warrant's a federal warrant. Mine's so a federal I'm... warrant, too. Where's he going? Hey, get over here! 
Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching, and have a happy new year. As always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail. Sorry, come again? <laughs>